What's up everyone? It's Lo Beauty Demon and we are back to talk about internet BS, specifically some creep show art Shannon BS. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get a notification every time I post. Don't send anybody that we talk about in this video any hate or negativity, nothing like that. These are just my thoughts and opinions based on what I'm seeing play out on the internet. So if you have something to say about the topic of the video, just shoot it down in the comments below. That's what they are there for. Okay, so today's video isn't technically about creep show art, but we will go over a little bit of some things that came to light from Shannon. But I actually wanted to talk about the video that Shannon's friend or Shannon's husband, Anthony, his friend posted uh, attempting to clear his name, I think, I think was the point of this video. So in Creepshow Arts video that was just posted on December 31st, she said that her friend Bryce Allen would be posting a video addressing the situation and clearing his name and sharing his side of the story and whatever. So I didn't know that he had actually posted it the exact same day. And I was not made aware of that until I actually recorded the podcast with my friend Zylie about a week later. So I finally was able to watch this video. It's been out for like two weeks or something now. But this guy in Emily's initial telling in her video, she called this guy Brandon. So this guy was friends with Anthony and therefore, you know, like, acquaintances with Shannon. You know how it is when you're in a relationship. You're like not really friends, but you like know each other. So it's just like, eh, I call that acquaintances. So they were acquaintances and actually all three of them were homeless. So I guess they were like kind of roommates together in a sense. They all lived together in a car. And I'm sure that can get very, very stressful, especially living with somebody who's not your partner in a vehicle. Like that sounds like a lot. This person went to high school with Anthony and actually knew Anthony when Anthony and Emily were dating. So Emily said this guy was obsessed with the Joker and that he and Anthony would either, I don't know if they would like say it or they would just like joke about shooting up their high school. He also apparently threatened to curb stop Emily, which is, you know, what Emily says. He he does refute that in this video. I mean, he just says, I did not threaten to curb stomp you. Shannon and he himself paint him as a autistic man who could literally not harm a fly, that he was just a cosplayer before cosplaying was cool. What a trendsetter. I do have to say, thank Whitney in heaven that this video was only six minutes long. What a peach in that sense. But the second I started this video, I was already creeped out. The thumbnail and then the actual picture. This video is called Fishbowl and it definitely looks like this is filmed in a dirty, algae-ridden fishbowl. This whole setting is just entirely weird. I don't understand why we are filming in the dark like this. So very quickly in the video, he describes himself back when he knew Emily as a 90 pound, undiagnosed autistic man. He finds it completely unbelievable that he would threaten to curb stomp Emily. And it's unbelievable that anybody would actually think, even if he said that, that he would be able to do it. Which, uh, the world isn't a boxing ring. Like we don't go by weight class out in the real world. Just cause somebody is 90 pounds does not mean they can't do a shit ton of damage. And really when it comes to like curb stomping, it's really not about how much you weigh. And small people can be just as dangerous too. I am sure there are probably some serial killers that are considered very small, con you know, compared to like average standards. And including all of that, I can't imagine Emily was really that much bigger than him in high school. So once again, that whole weight class thing just kind of goes out the window. He continues on and Bryce Allen, I never actually said his name. He was known by Brandon in Emily's video, but his name is Bryce Allen. So Bryce Allen continues to elaborate as just he was a really big fan of Halo in high school and would essentially like make his own armor to hang out in. You know, like we said, cosplaying before cosplaying was cool. He's a trendsetter. So then he also proceeds to show a few videos of himself and says like, do you think somebody like this could actually hurt you? Yeah, I do. I actually went to high school with a lot of people like this and one of them eventually started stalking me and found out where I lived and would come over to my house. So yeah, I 100% believe that this could totally hurt somebody. Did also make a note that this Bryce Allen fellow reminds me of somebody and I couldn't figure out who it was until I started reading through the comments. He 
totally sounds and in this is kind of like acting like Christian Slater from Heathers. 100%, which if you don't know what Heathers is about, it is about a guy that, I mean, essentially it's, it's really convoluted, but Christian Slater does want to like blow up the high school. At like two minutes in, he says he's doing this video to expose Emily. So if we think about this, we take this back to the court of public opinion. Emily's video was bringing forth what she saw as evidence of being stalked by Shannon and Anthony. And then Shannon brought forth her own video, which just, I mean, really, it kind of proved that she stalked Emily, but in her mind, it was building a character case against Emily. So this is what Bryce Allen is doing. He's essentially a character witness because he knew Emily back then. And Shannon's testimony already showed Shannon's true character. This is not gonna do what he thinks it's gonna do and not what Shannon hopes it's going to do. He says Emily was unstable, but nice enough, but would have lots of mental breakdowns, describe several of these morbid breakdowns about wanting to keep evil inside of her, all this stuff. Bryce then also says there was actually a point when he had to break up with Emily for Anthony, and she just, wouldn't accept it. Anthony had already tried to break up with her three times. She pleaded with Bryce, even though, you know, he says it really wasn't my choice. It's not my relationship. Like, we already know that she was a clingy teenage girl. This is probably one of her first relationships. I don't know, I guess I'll have to go back to Shannon's video to find out if Anthony was really her first real boyfriend or not. So yeah, your first relationships, you uh, are really cringy and clingy as fuck. I mean, it, not everybody, but a, a lot of people are. Calls Emily's video a cash grab, makes mention of Amber Heard cancel culture, real edgy, my friend. He does say Emily says some truths, but makes and lies with them so that way it's even harder to pick apart what's true and what's not true. But he thought they were friends or friendly but that years later Emily blindsided him. But in Emily's video it clearly shows that Shannon is the one that threw him under the bus to Emily. When I was going through shit I once accused my sister of being behind it so I understand. Then I said I thought it was maybe Andrew and Brandon for a time especially because Brandon is so intense and that can be contagious. And then when I brought up Brandon it was like she saw an out and pounced on it. Shannon said, I think it's Brandon. Last year, Brandon tried to get me fired because Andrew essentially chose me over him. Also, he tried to have an art YouTube and it hasn't been going well. We all moved to location together, lived in cars together, and he essentially tried to drive Andrew and I apart. I wouldn't be surprised if it was him. I asked, where does Brandon live now? Shannon said, mainly because he's tried shit with me before and Andrew had to step in. I don't know. Somewhere in location still. But I don't talk to him or look at his shit. I had to block him because he started messaging my followers, telling them I was a cunt and shit. Hmm, sounds really familiar. Shannon continues, he directly tried to sabotage my channel a couple of times. Hmm, sounds really familiar. I said, could he possibly live in location? I know that's where you guys were originally headed. Shannon says, I think so, yeah. I don't know for sure, but it's a couple hours away. I said, his last name was spelled last name, right? Shannon said, yes. Oh, apparently he lives in location. I just asked Andrew. Neither of us has talked to him for a year or so. I said, okay, I'll give that information to the PI. Look, you don't know how badly I want to believe it's not you guys. I wanted to believe it was some random nut job. Shannon said, yeah, I completely understand. Completely. Do what you need to do. And as for Brandon, if he is or was behind it, we didn't know. Andrew wouldn't have let you near him, and I just didn't like being around Brandon in general. And then he tells Emily and like anyone else, like, don't hide in the shadows. Do not hide in the shadows. Do not wait for your chance. I want you to seize the moment. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You are hiding in some weird green shadows right now. Also, this guy kind of reminds me of Dennis from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Like, you know, the dentist system way, or like when he talks about like taking a woman out to the boat, you know, onto the sea because of like the implications. That's the vibe I'm getting from here, especially like the leather jacket thing. So my takeaway from this is this guy is as creepy as I imagined that he would be. Emily kind of painted him as some like edgelord and that is what I am getting. And the comments were pretty much letting him have it. Like I said, several people said that this guy sounds like Christian Slater from Heathers, which I was like, thank you, finally. I was trying to figure out 
<laughs> what he sounded like. I, I kind of thought maybe he sounded like the new Morpheus in the new Morph or in the new Matrix movie, but not exactly. And it is, it is totally Christian Slater. Okay, but this video was posted like two weeks ago or, or whatever. And it has been quiet from Shannon and her camp ever since. Emily has said that she is going to be doing a response video. Uh, she recently said my creep show video is definitely going to be more than 20 minutes, but still under an hour. I appreciate everything that you're doing in terms of timing. I really do. I discovered some pretty damning evidence early on and then someone came forward with some interesting information and receipts. I interviewed Bob, I touched on my own life, etc., etc. Then that unedited Google Doc, which we will talk about, popped up and that further blew things out of the water. This rabbit hole is so much deeper than I ever imagined, but this video will be the last I'll be speaking about it on my YouTube channel. It's all very ugly. So I will definitely be waiting to see that. Now, what Emily mentioned though was a leaked Google Doc. Now, Nicholas DiOrio, who was friendly with Creepshow Art, friendly with Shannon. Um, now I don't know how friendly they were, but they talked and communicated and I'm pretty sure that I saw her donate money to him once on a stream. Maybe it wasn't his stream, maybe it was like Augie RFCs or something. But he just did a video about Creepshow Art and he actually included a link to a Google Doc, which appears to be a slightly longer version of the Google Doc that Shannon linked in her video of her script. Pretty much it just like cut into people a lot more. Now we can't say this is 100% from Creepshow Art, but Diorio did say he vetted it as well as he could. He asked a reputable YouTuber if this leak doc was real. Like I said, Cecil McFly said that she saw this like two, three months ago, so this was probably what she saw or something similar. And comparing it to the one that Creepshow Art posted, the majority of it really lines up. And what was cut does seem like stuff that would be on par with how Shannon would speak. Mostly Shannon elaborates on stuff that maybe she cut because she thought was too personal or unimportant. She does name several people that we don't know who these people are. So she cut out all these people's real names. So now these people's names are out there. She also makes claims that these people and Anthony's grandfather ha will testify in court. Says point blank, Anthony's grandfather has agreed to testify testify in court on this stuff. But like any mention of anyone officially testifying or agreeing to testify is not in the final draft. And maybe because they didn't agree to any of this stuff and they were like, no, I don't wanna be dragged into this. Take my name out of that. Shannon also digs into her former friends, fellow creators, Ashley Lilly and Repzilla. Now she barely had like one or two mentions of Ashley Lilly in the uploaded video and doesn't even mention Repzilla at all. She does mention Repzion in the description box. And when I initially read that, I thought it said Repzilla and was very confused. And then I was like, wow, she didn't even mention Repzilla because she cut all that shit out. Shannon, you know, made a lot of claims, a lot of people that they owe her money. Shannon, of course, did have that final fuck you to tipster, but elaborated on it a lot more. Also elaborated on a lot of the shit that they went through with uh, her sibling. I think broke down all the times that she sent her sibling money. So I'm assuming Shannon just wanted to cut all that out because, you know, some of that stuff is just too personal and maybe I guess Shannon even has a little bit of a soul. But in the beginning of this unedited document, Shannon clearly says, she knows that by doing this video, by putting all of this stuff together, everybody is gonna say, well, this is evidence that you are a stalker. So she knows what everybody's thought process is gonna be, but still thought this was gonna be a good idea anyway. And I'm kind of surprised because I thought Shannon thought something else was gonna come from this, but Shannon knew exactly what was gonna happen when she posted this video. So Shannon was totally fine with kamikazeing her channel and career because she was so pissed at everyone she didn't give a flying fuck anymore. But you know, Shannon says this was all public information and Shannon says in this document that actually a PI, a private investigator, is who found most of this stuff. I'm assuming just found it all and then just brought it to Shannon so Shannon could piece it together because some of the shit, if you really didn't know what you were looking for, you wouldn't be able to tell what a blog post was about and things like that. And if you guys want, I can do a whole entire video where I go through both of those documents and show like the changes and discrepancies where things were added and taken away. I have kind of been doing that a little on my own. I didn't know if that was a full on video people would want to watch. So let me know in the comments below. And that is it for today's video, you guys. If you like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Laters. Bye.